If parallel parking makes you nervous, it's probably because you're worried about hitting someone's car, or you don't want to look silly trying to park your car in a small spot. Well, here are some tips to help you parallel park. Now I'm starting with a space that's bigger than you'd actually need, but that's where you need to start as well. You want to make sure you're comfortable with the basics before you start parking in smaller spaces. So the first thing to consider is, will your vehicle even fit in the spot you're looking at? That's where the sidewalk comes into play. If you look at the sidewalk, you'll see joints cut every five feet. And so if you know how long your vehicle is, you can get a gauge for how many sidewalk squares you need to fit your vehicle. As long as you have maybe five or six squares, you know you can park there. So here's a basic tutorial on how to parallel park your vehicle. You'll pull past the spot you want, and you want to position your vehicle so that you're about a foot and a half off the vehicle next to you. Then you want to back your vehicle until your bumpers are aligned. You want your bumpers to be neck and neck. Now turn your wheels all the way to the right, and start backing up until you have your license plate lined up with that corner pocket. Continue to back up until you're sure the front of your vehicle is going to clear. Make sure you take it slow. Once you're sure, turn your wheels all the way to the left and keep backing in until your vehicle is even with the curb. If you want, you can pull forward to better straighten your vehicle. Here we go again, this time with a shot of the rear view on screen. Pull up next to the vehicle. Make sure you're bumper to bumper, turn the wheel all the way to the right, and start backing up until the center of your vehicle or license plate is headed for that corner pocket. Keep going until you're sure the front of your vehicle will clear. At that point you'll stop, turn all the way to the left, and swing your vehicle into the spot. If you want, you can pull forward and straighten it out. Here's what I mean by corner pocket. If these are the vehicles you're parking between, imagine a pool table in the spot that you want. As you line up your vehicle, you want that license plate, or the center of your vehicle, to line up with the corner pocket, just like if you were trying to make a shot. Also make sure you use your side mirrors. Here we're pulling up, next to our vehicle, getting ready to back into our spot. If you're not careful, you might get too close and the last thing you want is to clip the back of their vehicle with the rear of your vehicle. Make sure you're being extra careful and take all the time you need to safely do this. We just cleared. Now let's swing it in. Now if this is still intimidating, keep in mind it isn't any different than if you were to have pulled up behind a friend and they wave you forward. Hey, come on up here, I want to tell you something. And you pull up next to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Then you go back. You do a reversal of what you just did. Now here's a tip you can use. Some folks see this as a mistake, but you can actually use it as an advantage. You back up until your tire hits the curb. Of course, go nice and slow. You don't want to run your vehicle up and onto the curb, hitting the vehicle behind you. But once you've contacted the curb, you pull forward just a little bit until you can feel that bump where the asphalt meets the concrete. Lock your wheel to the left, swing it in. Now while you're doing this, you're still using the same principles of lining up with the corner pocket and backing it in. One advantage this method has is you can pull your vehicle very close to the curb. So here we are. Contact the curb. Pull forward until we run over that seam where the concrete meets the asphalt. Turn the wheels, and now we're super close to the curb, if that's what you're looking for. Here's that corner pocket view of what the contact curb method looks like. You can see my GoPro attached to the right rear quarter panel. If you want to see how I made that magnetic mount, you can follow me on Instagram. Same name, First Class Amateur. All right, waiting for the car to go by. Pull forward. Swing it in. Straighten it out. 
If you have a backup camera, this is even easier. Line up your bumpers, make sure you're not going to clip anything. Then we're going to aim our license plate for that corner pocket, and that nearest dotted line, we're going to keep backing up until the edge of that dotted line goes into the crease of the gutter. Right there. Now we're going to swing it in. Now here's something I highly recommend you do so that you are more comfortable trusting your backup camera. Find another vehicle and back up until that first line meets their tires. Then get out and measure. Here we see it's about 15 feet. Get back in and start backing up until the next line meets the tires. Get back out, measure. This is about 10 feet on my Honda Odyssey. Again, back it up. Now we're missing the tires, we can't even see them, but at least you can see the bumper. Measure, we have about five feet. Same thing again. Get out. Now we only have about a foot left. You'd probably never intentionally get this close, but at least you know what it looks like when you are that close. Finally, pull a trash can into the street and start backing up until you intentionally make contact with it. That way you know what it looks like when you finally hit something. Of course, you would never actually do this, but if you see yourself getting that close, at least you know you're wrong. Pull the trash can in front, pull forward as close as you can, right until you think you're just about to hit it. Then get out and take a look to see how close you actually got. Again, you're not actually gonna gamble with how close you can get to someone else's vehicle. You don't want that on your insurance. But it does help you to know how close you can get to something before you hit it. There you go, now you have a reference point. Now that you know the concepts of how to parallel park, here are some uninterrupted views so that you can see what it looks like in real time. This is looking at the back window. Here's the driver's view. We see our spot. Pull up about a foot and a half off the vehicle next to us. Line up bumper to bumper. Turn the wheels all the way to the right. Back up until we have our license plate lined up with the corner pocket. Once we know our vehicle will clear, stop, turn the wheel all the way to the left, and swing it in. Straighten it out if you want. Now here's that contact curb method. Nice and slow, you don't want to jump the curb. I've hit it. I want to pull forward until I feel that bump at the seam of the curb in the street. A little too far there. Now I back it up. Like everything else, practice makes perfect. Now let's see if you can walk yourself through how to parallel park. 